Welcome to the Chatting Chakras podcast, where we get our inspiration from chakras, yoga, art, and sacred space of friends. Here's your hosts ready to rock the rainbow with you, Christina Alexa, Lonnie Voivod, and Kate LeMay. Well, good day, fine humans out there in the interspheres. Welcome to Chatting Chakras, another episode. <laughs> We're getting ready to communicate into the world. We're in our blue chakra today. Lani or Christina, would you like to introduce yourselves? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I'm Lani Boy by Professional Muse. And what did you just say? In What did you just call it? Intersphere? What did you call it? Yeah, interspheres. I made it up. Interspheres cowgirl. Interspheres cowgirl. I love that. Yes, that's I've been going with that for so long. I know, since <laughs> 11. Of yes. And, and Christina, I see you have a different background today. This is exciting. Christina so Alexa, you... professional ballerina. Wow. If you can't tell from the background, no, just kidding. Um, uh, woodworker. Yeah. I mean, I got my, my literal woodworking hat on today in the middle of my, my day. What's up? I was just like, I didn't know you were a professional ballerina. Yeah. We were, we were ready. <laughs> you too. You take me so seriously. Thank you for uh, validating that. No, woodworker. And Kate, I was, who are you? Kate LeMay. Dun, dun, dun. So I got <laughs> Artist of Conscious Evolution, who just did this painting. Who did this painting? <laughs> I do like a sound. Kate LeMay. Da, da, da. Kate LeMay. Da, da, da. Well, ladies, I'm so grateful for your time today to jam about communication. Who would like to be our reader today? I would be delighted. Like, great. Thanks, Lonnie. Yes. Communication, the large circle in the center is you. The smaller circles around the large circle are others. The squiggly line is the interaction between the two. Communication is vibration mixing between two parts. Be conscious of what you emit and receive. And our mantra today is I consciously communicate. I consciously communicate. Vibration mixing between two parts. Be conscious of what you emit and receive. <laughs> oh my gosh, a rap. Wow, it's, it's all happening. Uh. Does anybody have any strong urges? From the you know, I'm just rereading this for myself um, because this is a, a pretty wild image that you channeled there, Kate. Large circle in the center is you. Smaller circles around the large circle are others. Squiggly line is the interaction. That's why you said intrasphere. Hmm. We're interacting together and we consciously, um, the first hit that I got, um, I love that you wrote communication is vibration mixing between two parts. Be conscious of what you emit and receive. First, first hit I got was, you know, how exciting it is to, if you're listening to this podcast and as we're doing this podcast to go, okay, what do I need to consciously communicate? Not just to others, but to myself today, you know, just today, keep it simple. And is there anything nagging at us? Is there any small thing that we've been overriding thinking I can just handle that or justifying it away because um, communication is not always comfortable right it takes a little bit of courage to honor our truth um, be honest with ourselves satya is a uh, truth and and you know be meticulously honest with self and then to own it once we take ownership of what we're hearing and what our truth is and what we need to communicate to self or others, then it's an easier communication. And then to release attachment to outcome because when we communicate, if we're attached to how we are received or what the response is, um, that can breed reaction. It's, we're lucky and we're blessed if we receive the reaction or the response that we, not the reaction, but the response 
that we think that we want, but if we trust that any way the communication received is received is actually for the highest healing good. Mm. So even if we're met with reaction, even if we're met with resistance through communication, that is also our blessing. Mm. So I think it's a win-win when we have the courage, you know, 99.9% .9 of the work is done when we're honest with ourselves, when we understand what we need to communicate to ourselves or others. And then the communication happens if we have the courage to make a communication that's a healthy one and take ownership. That's 99.9% .9 of it. We're in our value. We're self-validating through that whole process. And then release attachment to the outcome when an excellent muscle to exercise. Um, this, is a, this is a favorite of mine because I've had to learn this. I had to build those muscles in this lifetime. And, um, and it's still always a little bit scary, like to make a conscious communication, you know, it's like, I have to prepare myself inside. Okay. Do I really want to do this? Do I want to move out of my comfort zone and make this communication? Yes, I do. I know I can do this release attachment to outcome, make it easy for myself. And then, and, um, that is how we live in love. Mm -mm -mm. That's my hit. This, I can't tell you how relevant this is right now for what you're saying to me, because lately, you know, I, I feel like I've been, I am growing a lot in my, my roles and responsibilities in my work, in my, um, I think in our work in YTT, <laughs> and I, I am feeling like as I consciously communicate around things that are, I would say different than I always do, right? Like when people expect you to be a certain way, it's easy. It's like, you know, you know, if you're only saying kind thing or you try to always be kind, but it's, if you're always, always saying things that are agreeable to the other people around you versus if you're sort of asking for something different or putting a boundary up or expressing a need that when you do that, it's risky, you know, because it's like that, you know, that they might not take it a certain, like, I just love how you just said, and then you release the expectation of how they receive your conscious communication, because that I think is where I just spend an exorbitant amount of time. It's like, sometimes, I mean, I communicate with a lot of people. Like I, I probably interact with, I don't even want to know too many people for me to even understand, let alone as you start to be in podcasts, right. And you start to communicate where you don't even know how people are hearing what you're hearing. And then you know, we get those kind things that people say, but probably the number of people judging is equal, if not more, or having their own reaction to how things are being said. And to be able to release that expectation, I think, man, what a freeing exercise. If we, you use the word boundary, Kate, if you don't mind me jumping in, cause I get so excited about this one. Um, that is the thing. If How much time do we spend anticipating what we think someone's reaction or response is going to be to our communication? And how many times do we keep ourselves from making a conscious communication with another because we anticipate what we, oh, they're just going to be this way, so I'm not going to do it. What if we put a healthy boundary up within ourselves that we are responsible for? This is within our power. And we go, you know what? Um, I'm not even going to begin to imagine because assume nothing, right? Oh. Accept everything, assume nothing, take nothing personally and do your best to uphold the first three. Assume nothing. How the heck do we know in any one given moment what somebody else's process is like? So that boundary is key there. And then keep the boundary up when you make the communication if they are like flinging shit. Excuse me, I'm sorry to swear on the podcast, but if stuff happens, that's their privilege. That's, you know, how many times do we make a communication like with a loved one and um, or a spouse or a life partner or a child? And we know, you know, the first reaction to a communication, even if we own it, do our best and our non-charge is reaction. Mm. But then they go away and it sinks in and then they come back and they're like, you know what? I thought about what you said, you know, so so we just keep that healthy boundary up and we're just like, you know, what? I'm not going to breathe here. I'm going to do top this and I'm going to get through this. So anyway, I think the word boundary, Kate, is key. 
and I was thinking about, you know, my boundary, but I love also the other boundary of not having any expectation because how many times do we not consciously communicate because we're thinking about what we think. So, it's gonna yeah. so Lonnie. Yeah, Lonnie. Thank oh, yeah, uh, a couple things. I am really, um, I'm excited to be reminded that, that the essence of communication is nothing more or less than vibration. So we bring it back, the conversation back to energy energetic you know uh exchange of ideas and um and that reminds me just because it's placed like that communication is vibration we um it is not just the words we speak uh what do they say 85 percent of communication is through body language through to tonality through um just the expectation of others the assumptions of others which um, I love that that's coming up again, that what we talked about pretty thoroughly last week of assume nothing, you know, accept everything, take nothing personally. Like I, I don't Remember think it's an accident. Three. Yes. <laughs> that, that this comes alive again. Um, because those, those darn assumptions will destroy relationships, yeah. will, will uh, block any growth, any evolution of what could be. Have you ever had the experience? I mean, I know I've done this with um, my uh, my dad is coming through a lot, like right now. Just I know I've done this with my dad, where I I spoke my truth in some way, you know, waited for the reaction I assumed would happen, and it was nothing. I mean, he saved my life a couple times because I I was ready to do some really stupid things in my twenties. <laughs> And instead of him yelling at me or, or, you know, I assumed he would lose, you know, respect or anything, he just very even handedly um, showed up and was like, well, that doesn't sound like a great idea, but it was just, it was without, <laughs> hard, you know, like getting in a trailer with an ex-con and, you know, fly, going around, I'm like, you know what? I was able to hear that differently, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> uh, like, um, yeah. So, so I like that. For me, what's the dis distillation of communication being vibration mixing between two parts? You are invited to remember that it's not just you saying things perfectly and then wondering why the world isn't reacting perfectly. It's um, However, however you're communicating things, including text, including email, like the, um, the ways we communicate are not even just physiological anymore. There are these places that we all have, have built assumptions about texting is, is my own, like, I can't believe how many people have life changing conversations or try to through text and then build in all this extra energetic assumption about what it means if they don't reply right away or what it means. There's no benefit of the doubt given what it means if they, if the spelling is wrong, like this, it's just a, it's kind of a mess, but you also have to be conscious of what you emit and receive and realize that even in your purest efforts, you may, um, another person's body, another person's vibration might be in a moment, in a, in a, in a life, um, life experience way, like might be hearing and experiencing everything built on different assumptions. Mm -hmm. So where does that leave us? <laughs> it sounds like it's a pretty, pretty tall, bumpy hill to climb. I will be honest. It's a miracle we get anything through, which I guess is if we go back, back to vibration, if we are willing to, to approach someone with as much purity, purity as we can and we develop relationships and learn someone else's heart, that is, a, to me, the purest form of, of uh, communication. But that, that takes time and effort and love and, you know, gratitude and, you know, that there's the, in there lies the miracle. It, 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 I love that, Lonnie. Thank you for bringing it back to vibration. You know, and I think it's worth pausing for a moment and saying, you know, pointing out how we own our communication. And again, not just with others, but with self, you know, because when we take ownership of what our need is or what we need to communicate, we talk typically talk in I statements. It's very simple. Like I feel dot, dot, dot. I feel this is what I'm feeling right now. 
because if we start our communications with self or others, because we can do it with ourselves as well, with you, 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 it's very accusatory and it sets up an instant defense um, in ourself or others. And so going to that place of vibration and you mentioned tonality, you know, um, listen to the tones in our own thoughts toward ourselves. They, they tend to be, they can be brutal sometimes. We can be brutal with ourselves. And can you imagine using those same tones with someone else? Maybe, maybe, maybe we have at times, but um, sometimes we can play the game with ourselves where we think we're owning something and even speak in an I statement, but our tones are accusatory, right? It's like, how deep can we go with this process? Um, I think that is the hill you mentioned. That's the, that's the biggest hill I think that we climb, but we can get strong around that hill and we can climb it well. Um, and then the gift of if we are not received the way we think we want to be received, what comes up in us to pause for a moment. We've talked about this endlessly through these podcasts. Like if we pause for a moment and reflect, what is this, what is this reaction I'm having? Like I'm never listened to you. I'm never heard. I'm never supported. I'm never dot, 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 whatever the reaction is. If we can then again, stay with that um, idea of ownership and go, you know what? This is a repeated theme in me. This is how I always feel when someone reacts this way, communicate and advocate for myself, whether it's me or another. This is always what comes up in me. Therefore, guess what? It's mine. It's not about that other person. Um, um, somebody told me recently, uh, this insurance guy came into this office, this is a real story, and he had a business card that fell out of his briefcase and it had some bold writing on it. And the person asked this insurance guy, what is that card? What's it say? And the insurance guy said, I need to be reminded of this every day. And the card said, I'm going to swear again, this is our swearing podcast. Um, uh, if you meet an asshole in the morning, you met an asshole. If you meet assholes all day, you're the asshole. Amen. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, oh yeah. That. And the insurance guy went, sometimes I have to be reminded that I'm the asshole, right? It's our shit, sorry. But if we are finding ourselves having that same dialogue, like I'm always not supported or whatever, dot, dot, dot. It's time for us to look at that really simple voice inside and go, guess I need to support myself. Guess I need to listen to myself. I guess I need to be here for myself because I'm always telling myself I'm lonely. I guess I need to get intimate with myself. I guess I need whatever, dot, 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 give ourselves the gift. Hmm. That's it. It's easier than we think. There's actually a formula. <laughs> okay, that's it. Um, I, I feel like so many mics are being dropped around this episode. I love it. Oh, did Lonnie freeze though? He looks a little frozen. No, no. can you see me? We can hear you. Okay. But Lonnie, I love the face that you froze at. I think oh, it's great. No. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. No, it's good. <laughs> it's okay. It'll re it'll reboot. It'll reboot. Okay. Um, I didn't know if I could bring in a little Anadea, if that would be okay. Yes, please. Are you guys ready? Okay. Yeah. So this chakra, ready for it? The gateway to consciousness, sound, rhythm, vibration, words, powerful rulers in our lives. We take these for granted, using them, responding to them, creating them anew each day. We are the subjects of rhythm upon rhythm, endlessly interweaving the fabric of experience. From the first cries of a newborn child to the harmonies of a symphony, we are immersed in the infinite web of communication. Communication is the connecting principle that makes life possible. From the DNA encoded messages of living cells to the spoken or written word, from the nerve impulses connecting mind and body to the broadcast waves connecting continent to continent. Communication is the coordinating principle of all life. It is the means whereby consciousness extends itself from one place to another. Within the body, communication is crucial. 
Without electric communication between brain waves and muscle tissue, we couldn't move. Without chemical communication of hormones to cells, there would be no growth. No cues for cyclical changes, no defenses against disease. If it were not for the ability of DNA to communicate genetic information, life could not exist. And then this is the last paragraph I'll read. Our civilization is equally dependent on communication as connecting fabric through which we coordinate the complex tasks of cooperative culture. Much as the body cells work together to form one organism, our communication networks are a cultural nervous system connecting all us all. Mm. Mm. This goes back from microcosm to macrocosm again, right? Um, Kate, will you hold up that book just so that yes. people can yeah. see it? Wheels, wheels of life, life. My, my favorite, favorite. And this page alone, that's how much like so many notes. On this that page. is just so beautiful. Isn't wow. that crazy? It's just so yeah. good and simple. I think um, recently I've been kind of on a kick around nature and like deep nature, animal nature, right. you know, sick, you know, lunar, na you know, celestial nature, nature, energetic nature, and how some of this stuff is just super, like, you don't have to like look too far to hear some profound answers about why we are the way we are, you know? And it's like, we think, I mean, I, for sure, I feel like I'm a mystery to myself at all times. <laughs> and then there are other days where I'm like, oh, this makes sense. This makes sense. So um, I like, I, I, I'm in a space right now where I'm learning about how, and you probably already know all this, uh, Christina, it's just that um, the yin yang symbol where the masculine is the white and the feminine is the black and that the feminine represents chaos and the masculine rep energy represents order and that we deeply need to live in order and chaos to feel alive. Why, but why Kate? <laughs> Tell me why, why you tell me why well I mean I love that it's speaking to you because you are the artist of conscious evolution and you invite you know all of that energy vibration that intuition that k we can call it chaos from the uh ethers from the unknown from the mysteries of you and then um the order creates that container and the structure right it is a perfect balance it's the divine marriage masculine and feminine and I just love that, you know, I, as someone who had to learn order and structure in this lifetime to contain my own chaos, um, I appreciate it so much. I don't take it for granted. And anytime I feel like ungrounded in my own um, creative forces that come through, I, I remember now, oh, where's my container? Where's my ground? Where's my order to help me manage this, channel this flow, you know, which I know you know oh so well, right? But it's, I'd love, and within that, um, in that yin yang's um, image, in the middle of the black is a white circle. In the middle of the white is a black circle. Again, that balance. And the inside, when we go to the heart of yin, there's yang. And then if we keep traveling into that yang and the heart of that yang is yin, it is an endless blooming flower. In the heart of that yin, there's yang. And there it goes all the way through. We are the endlessly blooming flower. Lani, are you still with us? I am. Am I still Ooh. frozen to you? You're still or frozen, but again, the face is precious. Oh and it's so no. Good. <laughs> I think and I just, to note, to tie that up real quick is just that I think the reason I speak about the unknowing and the knowing or the chaos and the structure is that I, I deeply believe that our deepest level of communication is surrendering within that chaos to find structure and or when the structure is so too much and you know it's not what it, you've got to surrender into the chaos to get to what your structure should look like. So what I guess I'm trying to say is like, in the macro and the microcosmicness of these ideas smushing together with communication. Like we are built with chakra centers in our body, conscious of itself, these little discs, conscious of being 
uh, receptors for these ideas and listening. So as we emit from the blue chakra, AKA the gateway to consciousness. The Shuddha chakra. You know, that, I just, that's, that's that. So, okay, Lonnie, go. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's, I, I don't, I'm self-conscious that I'm frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also, I love- You can gateway. still communicate, Lonnie. Okay, good. There's a uh, metaphor in there somewhere. Um, and then you read the gateway to consciousness was uh, exciting to me. And then I, when you read um, consciousness, ex well, uh, this is not verbatim. Consciousness extends itself from one to another via communication, you know, um, yeah, the, the levels that we can, Oh, and the cultural nervous system. That was the other thing. So let's, you know, I'll keep it light and quick, but like cultural nervous system, I think 2020 showed us that so clearly, you know, where I think, I think our uh, culture finally caught up to what's been happening with, with external communication passageways, where every, you know, where the things that we're feeling inside, we're showing up, you know, in news, in different media outlets and, and, this is why we are, uh, we saw so much more of humanity's, I mean, angst and concerns and priorities and confusions and chaos. I don't know. I, I love a framework where that, that, and I've read a few insightful articles that say, you know, we, the gift is in this accelerated uh, perspective, this accelerated awareness, right? Like that we, that so much shadow material came up quickly, which was, can be overwhelming for ourselves and for our culture, right? But there's stuff that we need, that needed to come to the surface so we can deal with it. You can't deal with anything until it comes to the surface, right? Um, so when it says that, that, you know, the shoot chakra, this is the, this throat chakra is the, gateway to consciousness and it, it also serves as our cultural nervous system um these two ideas will keep me occupied in my uh in my brain in my heart for probably the rest of the week i will say because <laughs> they seem to have a lot of um interdependent fascination yeah and i think you know it's interesting this morning well at some point in time i never like to give away the time we record these shows but the the um i was blessed enough to to listen to another podcast being recorded this morning where in our organization uh two members of our community spoke out about the upcoming pride month in june and hearing them talk about their journey being gay individuals in our world and in our ymca culture you know young men's christian association culture and listening to our CEO love them unequivocally. I mean, we started talking about transgender youth as the biggest need for avocation right now uh -huh. on the podcast from the YMCA. And wow. I, I got teary just hearing it all, you know, cause I was like, oh, this isn't a conversation between these two advocates. You know, they're the self-identified advocates for this group of people in our organization talking to the leader ceo but recorded and shared and i i was very aware of what you know could be nothing could you know maybe 10 people hear it but the truth is that i think lonnie to your point about sort of what just happened in our a sphere, right, where a lot of our world became much more external in its communication because we weren't having gatherings internally, right? We were meeting visually, we were texting, we're communicating more, we're communicating more through technology instead of in person. We're heck low to put people started recording and shipping things versus even if it's on the new scholarly journal TikTok, like it's just like a lot, a lot more is being shared, right? And when we think of this as the the muscle of consciousness ev evolving a species, consciousness evolving itself, because it requires communication as its gateway, the Vishuddha 
chakra as its gateway, vibration as its gateway. Like this is pretty powerful stuff. And so we started at the micro of us and our own boundaries around not judging. When we say something, it's not our business what other people lit here on the other side of our conscious communication, right? Not here, um, the way they respond, right, Christina? Did I say that how right? How they receive it and how, how they, they then respond, it. yeah. And then respond. Yeah. So that's not our job. But our responsibility is to being as true as possible and as clear and conscious around our communication as possible with it emitting and receiving, you know, according to our card <laughs> in this area, that is our job, that part. And um, secondarily, just when we do that and then are willing to possibly share that on those fringes of consciousness and sort of societal standards and norms is really where I think some of this stuff really lives, you know, because not that long ago, you could be killed for saying some of the things that we say now publicly, you know, or burned at the stake if you were, you know, a witch <laughs> and like, or practicing anything other than, you know, this is the way things are, you know? And so, um, yeah. 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 So how do we uh, consciously communicate? And, you know, how do we know, is it a, is it a feeling? Is it a knowing? Does it take half a lifetime to figure out? Like, is there a, a tip sheet? Go ahead, lady in the woodworking hat. <laughs> <laughs> the ballerina. Um, I, I, that's something I wanted to hopefully stick in there before we end today. Um, a beautiful rule of thumb that I use that I was given years and years ago and many were, um, and you may have heard this before, is if you can't let go, communicate because Sometimes we can work, manage this stuff ourselves, whether we're, again, I keep having to say, whether we're trying to evolve in some place within ourselves and listen to ourselves or whether we have something to communicate outward. If we can't let go, then we must communicate. We have a responsibility. And then we take ownership of what our need is or what we need to communicate. We then can present it. The other thing is it's good to wait till we're not charged, but life is not always that um, neat and clean. Sometimes we do make messy communications and we do it when we have an emotional charge and then we can maybe round back again. But, and sometimes that's even the medicine of the moment. Like sometimes we need to use fire to make a communication, but you can't let go communicate. And then when you, when we communicate, take ownership of what we're communicating. And then um, again, not be attached to the outcome, but if we truly are coming from a place of um, desire to be compassionate with ourselves and others, and we actually have done that work inside of ourselves and it just all the stars align and all of a sudden we're non-charged anymore because we realize we've taken ownership and we realize what our need is and we actually feel our own need. So the emotional charge is gone, but we still have to communicate. Here's a little tip that I use a lot and it's it is purely from a place of con compassion. And I understand not all communications are like this or go like this, but if I've done my own work, it just so happens that, that I was ready for it and that happens, but I'm still making communication. I sometimes will, um, instead of speaking in I statements, I'll, I'll form a question and I'll ask the person because at that point, it's just pure curiosity. I'm like, so, um, how do you feel, how do you, how have you been feeling lately? And have you noticed that you're emotionally charged around this issue lately? How does that feel for you? What's going on? You know, all of a sudden I no longer need them to validate me because I validated myself in the process. That's and that question of yourself. I ask that question of others. Oh, the other. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I know that's hard to say, I say that um, I have a, you know, say it's a spouse and the spouse has been repeatedly, you know, having coming home angry or something or stressed out from work. And then you are reacting to it inside and you realize, oh, 
it's just because I don't feel heard or seen and there's no sense of intimacy. So then you answer that call for yourself in some way, shape or form. I'm gonna spend time with myself. I'm gonna hear myself. I'm gonna fill my needs. And then you actually take care of that, that issue. But there's still a communication that needs to be made because the cycle keeps happening and there's something out of balance. Then you could go to your spouse or life partner or child or co whoever it is and say, hey, you know, I, I feel like you have been, um, you know, stressed out lately. How are you doing? You know, what's going on? And then it becomes about them. So we fill our own needs and then the communication becomes actually about the other person communicating with themselves. I know that's a little bit more abstract, but. But it holds space for them. Like you're holding a container for them to then have a space to process maybe some of those things in a non-threatening open generous way with no expectations of what is going to occur from that interaction but it it holds the potential for uh bridging get it you know they are able to then consciously communicate about what they really need and you're in yeah. to hear it or receive it we think we we need to be heard but what if we give what we most want to receive ah. and then and then to, to rope this to the divine, you know, we've been talking about macrocosm and microcosm. Um, what, what, what divine guidance is coming through that we need to receive and then communicate? You know, there, there's always that connection to, oh, Lonnie, you're unfrozen. To Yay! Self. And you look so <laughs> uh, Yes. <laughs> you're unfrozen. I was like, look how beautiful you are. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> or, or yoke the divine, rope it to the divine. So I... I I think that's it. I, I just really wanted to say, if you can't let go, communicate, try to do it without a charge. If there's a charge, let it get messy, take ownership. You know, there's so much here. There's so much to learn and know that, you know, life is messy sometimes and it's not going to be perfect. Communication is our hardest thing, but if we bring it back to that vibration, we're just trying to connect. If we keep our own nerves healthy coming off the spine, you know, and our information highway in the body is as healthy as optimized as it can be, um, you know, bring that out to the macrocosm. I, I do think that everything that we're saying is so, so important. Uh, and jaw, throat jaw, I just want to say that too. That's where throat chakra lives, masculine chakra. Go ahead, Lenny. Oh, I just, I was going to just that simplest thing, uh, the distilling down to the essence of Am I communicating with love? Am I communicating through love? Is love communicating through me? I just think that, you know, that's my personal checkpoint that if I do have a charge and still have to say something like before you make noises with your face, <laughs> before, you know, <laughs> like you might have tears, you might, it, you, for me, it, it, sometimes it's all I can do to take that extra breath. But, you know, if I am able to stay to the best I can in some kind of <laughs> vibration of love, I'm usually okay. Now, sometimes the message I want to say gets past the guards. <laughs> and I know it as it comes off my tongue. And I'm like, that is not in love. And I'm like, I don't care. I want to say it. Rah! You know, like sometimes <laughs> you have to, you know, admit to being human. But that, that happens fewer and fewer times. And for that, I am eternally grateful. I think Kate you, you, Kate and I have had extended conversations. We have that same gift of being able to be very sharp with the tongue if we wanted to. It's like boom, boom, boom. But um, I think less and less. Thank, thank goodness. It's not pretty. It's not to, a quality to... I love about myself. No. <laughs> and, I, and, it, and, it, and, I, and I, the reason is because it's not authentic and true it's really just a need I'm not taking care of in myself. So when I come at you with like my stab, it's because I'm not all right and that I need something. And I definitely think our work with this stuff and in YTT has deeply helped me to, to cause that's, I actually, I would barometer that as some of my, well, and I guess Christina, you would say that if it happens, supposed to happen and it's like you were initially I was like taking great taking great notes when you were saying you know we want it to be perfect but sometimes it comes out with fire you know and that in in itself is its own act of healing but the more conscious I am of how much I hate 
I don't ever want to do that on purpose to others. Um, I notice that that normally happens when I'm tired or when I have less, um, you know, what, what are you going to say? What is happening right there, Christina? I, I'm so excited because, and I know, I know we're trying to be timeline conscious today, but um, because there's another opportunity there. And if we know, we all have a killer inside. You've heard me say this yeah. and, and that may shock everybody like, well, I'm not a killer. I live in love and I practice no, we and violence. A we all have a killer inside. And that's a metaphor. I don't mean literal. If it's literal, <laughs> that's your, never mind. Anyway, so we all have a killer inside. And when you're like, you say, you stab, I stab, you know, when I'm coming at you in reaction, I, this is how I operate. If we know how we operate when we're in reaction and we say, oh, that's my killer. That's another, um, that's shadow work. And, and, and we learn something about ourselves. So my personal killer is a stealthy operative. I will come around the corner with a knife and slice your throat before you know it, it happened, right? And I have a little hat on and I do this thing. Um, don't be afraid. And it's not this hat. I, I needed to learn that about myself. And when I did, every time my killer comes up inside, I'm like, oh, there you are. I see you go away. Now I know I'm not going to, you're not at the helm. I'm at the helm. Right. And then I call out my killer when my, can I swear one more time today? Yeah. When my shit comes up and I need to slay my inner crap. Like I'm, being brutal with myself, I'm being self-critical, I'm being this, I'm that. Then I, in a healthy way, will call on my killer with a knife and say, hey, can you slash that for me? Because I need that determination, I need that fire, and I need that killer to be operational right now with my own stuff so I'm clear, right? That's how we use our killer in a good way. So know how you operate in reaction and then use it in a healthy way, hmm. your own stuff. Yeah. Yes. That's shadow work and it's really freeing. Because we take ownership, we go, oh, my shadow stuff, I don't have a shadow. No, I'm I want to be good all the time, you know? Uh-uh, use your shadow in a healthy way. Well, and that's where, like, in wholeness, we talk about how you need all your parts. Like, they're all, we don't have these parts just because. They serve us in some way, but it's just, I think, using them in the way that serves us best, right? It doesn't have a wake the size of France, you know, from everything we're doing all the time. Yes. And I, I have to say the way you describe your killer, Christina, and it sounds like, it, like <laughs> the only visual that came in my head is the Hamburglar. So I think you're welcome. Your killer, I think, is the Hamburglar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Classic. Some people there. use and, a, a bat. Some people use an axe. Some people use a sword. Some people, you know, when I go into my healing work, I sometimes I see those weapons with people, and I'm like, oh, that's who you are. So let's use this in a healthy way. It's it's good stuff. I know I always take it there, but I think it's important. You know, I love it. I love that we go there. I love that this is what we do for our like funnest time and I was like yeah. so excited to see you guys today. <laughs> I, I knew we would get to our inner killers and, and <laughs> we would talk about the cosmos and the you know our intimate relationship so I feel like you know just as a grounding of where we've come and where we've gone this set sure. is uh we did path to flow to will to relationship to communication and next week we get to connect it and then we end on Rainbow Bridge in this set. So this is a beautiful set. And I I do feel very strongly that these stitch really well. Like I, as we're talking about relationship, I don't feel like we're that far away as we talk about communication, right? Just like when we were talking about Will, it led really nicely into relationship. So I think um, I'm really grateful for everyone that's listening today and Monty and Christina for your willingness to play in this game each, each week, I am so grateful for you and these recorded conversations as I think that they are such the, they are such a gift and beautiful evolution of this work, which is so not just my work. Like this is just, I get, I feel like we're blessed to be on the roller coaster of that. Like if it was a ride, right? We're like, Wee! you know, we're having so much fun. And, and that with this um, card of communication, I just want to nod to where we are on, you know, we're almost through set three. And um, there's a lot of gifts in each one of these cards for us all to kind of 
play with. That's what I was thinking about. Page. This is the, these yeah. are all the blues. And um, we are on communication. We still have four more rounds to go on. Yeah, we, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought we'd we'll still have stuff to talk about? It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, everybody who's listening. Into Spear Cowgirl, signing off. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Find us on social media at The Chatting Chakra Show and at www.katelemay.com. Check back weekly for new episodes where we are always celebrating, enjoying the journey. 